it was super strange. It was like seeing this man in his 40s dressed as a teenager. It's me, Gan, and today I'm going to be doing a little bit of a different video than usual. Today I'm going to be telling you about a story which many of you have asked me about since it happened because I think that it piqued a lot of people's interest and I thought I would just go ahead and tell you what happened because it was kind of crazy. So I want to start this off by saying that not everyone in Japan is a weirdo, it's just that every country has its weird people and I was <laughs> lucky enough to stumble across one of the weird people. <laughs> Before I start, if you would like and subscribe to make me feel better about my life, that would be great. Okay, so this all happened on a random evening. It was after school and after work. At the time, I was working a little bit later than I would nowadays just because this has happened to me, but back then I never had any problems at night, so I never tried to work earlier, if that makes sense. I mean, Japan is a very safe country for the most part compared to like London and things like that, so I wasn't so worried about working at night. Anyway, it was around 9 o'clock at night and I was walking home. I lived 10 minutes away from the station and it was quite a quiet area, only some buildings and it was dark. And as I was approaching my door, from the other side of the road, a man cycles towards me. And I don't think anything of it because people just don't really bother me like that. Then he started speaking to me and I remember him being just like super strange. He was a man in maybe his 40s and he had like a little like moustache thing going on. And he was wearing, he was, he was wearing like a hoodie and he had a monster cap on and he was riding a BMX. It was super strange. It was like seeing this man in his 40s dressed as a teenager. It was really strange. So then he proceeds to try to talk to me, which freaks me out because I'm outside of my house. It's dark, it's late, and no one else is around. At first he tries speaking Japanese to me and I pretend I don't understand. Then he tries speaking English to me and I still pretend I don't understand. And then for about five minutes he tries playing this game where he shows me his phone on a map and he's like trying to get me to tell him which country I come from. And he's playing around with Google Translate trying to get me to tell him like which language I speak and trying really hard to communicate with me. And I'm just like frozen on the spot. I have no idea what to do because there's this huge old man trying desperately to make conversation with me. I'm just so freaked out. After like five minutes of desperately trying to make conversation with me, he offers his hand to shake and I'm thinking like, oh my god, thank god, he's gonna shake my hand and leave and it's gonna be fine and then I can go home and go to sleep and forget about all this. But that did not happen. So I shake his hand because I'm thinking like, wouldn't it just be fantastic if he leaves me alone? But what happens then is he strokes my hand like this. And he's like, hosoi, hosoi ne? Which means like, ooh, you're so slim. And I'm just like, uh -huh. Like freaking the f out. I, like I had no idea what to do. So then he pretends to leave. So he continues down the direction that he was going and I walk past him, past my house, pretending I didn't just stop outside my house. As I walk down the road, I'm like turning around to see if he leaves and after a while he's gone. And I think, okay, cool, phew, and I rush inside. At this point, I call my boyfriend because I'm freaking out. I'm like, oh my gosh, you'll never believe what happened. Then he starts desperately knocking on my window, which freaks me out. So I lived on the first floor and he was just like knocking and I was like, oh my gosh, I felt like he could go through the window. I was freaking out. And he was saying like, hello, hello. Obviously because he just heard me speak English, which I pretended I didn't speak. And I was like, oh my gosh, this man is going to break my window and kill me. I was so scared. So I rush out of my room and I'm sitting in the hallway. As a side note, I lived in a share house, but the people in the share house were just like not social, so no one ever spoke to me, so that was just not even any help. And I'm on the phone to my boyfriend, who is obviously freaking out too, so we're both freaking out. And my boyfriend calls the police and explains to the police what happened. Then, the police show up at my door, like, I don't know, 15 minutes later. They are circling around the neighborhood to find the man. I've never studied police language, so I, I didn't know what to say. I was just very terrified so I had my boyfriend on speaker and we were both just like telling what happened and then we went there for a while with the police there and with the door open it was just like a whole mess and then 
after a while they tell me that they did actually find him and they wanted me to see if I could recognise him. So they drove me past in a police car with tinted windows which apparently he couldn't see in from and he didn't react so I suppose it's true. And I said yes, that is definitely the man. He was very recognisable in his red hoodie and monster cap. The police then take me in for questioning and I end up on the phone with a translator who's also not very good at English but like it was like one o'clock in the morning at this point. So I'm at the police station being questioned and asked to tell the story again and again and again to a translator on the phone and they were asking me for so many details like uh, where did he touch you, what did he say, it just went on for a while and they were basically trying to find something that they could arrest him for because Japan doesn't seem to have very strict laws on like stalking or like threatening someone or just being like creepy I guess. I don't know if you would in the UK either, I don't know much about laws but what I do know is that in Japan they have a bit of a stalking crisis and I know this because I watched some documentaries about it like just a few weeks before this happened which is great, great for me. I never thought it would happen to me but I know that there have been some people who were stalked for many 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 years and then in the end got killed and the police just couldn't do anything about it until they actually got killed which is it's just that's what I want to wait for so as you may guess he was actually just set free and the police was like oh well be careful because he lives on the same road as you and the thing is that I don't know how long this guy's been watching me I don't know if this was the first time he saw me and he just guessed based on maybe the lights that I was in that room or if he had seen me before and therefore knew which room I lived in but I was not willing to take that risk in the slightest, I mean, after hearing all those stories about people who get stalked and killed and after possibly angering the guy, I was just, mm, nope, not playing with that. So thanks to you guys saving me, and I'm not even like exaggerating, you guys actually could have maybe saved my life when I made a GoFundMe. The reason why I made the GoFundMe was because in Japan, in share houses, and also in uh, flats and things like that. If you want to move out, you have to give them a one month or a two month notice. So in order for me to leave, I have to just continue living there for one more month. And I, I mean, I couldn't sleep while I was staying there. I was terrified and I just wanted to move straight away. The day after, I went straight to a different housing company and asked them to find me a place near my boyfriend's house. And then I ended up moving a week later because of your wonderful donations which help with move-in costs and move-out costs. And then after that, I moved into my apartment. But for a while, I basically just rushed to move to like this other place. And then for a week, I stayed with my boyfriend. I don't know. I just wanted to clarify to you guys what happened because I did make a GoFundMe. And I didn't realize that once you end the GoFundMe, everything closes and you can't see the story or anything like that. So I wanted to retell the story and give you like a real thank you. I'm so thankful that you guys helped me. You guys don't even know like seriously I couldn't sleep I was so terrified and I still had school and all these things it was just like so intense I was so scared every time I left the house that he was gonna be there and I was so scared at night that he would start knocking on my window again because he lived on the same road as me as a side note I would like to say that I am not very strong and I'm not allowed to carry any form of you know, I can't carry mace, I can't carry a weapon, because if I do that, I risk getting my visa confiscated. So I literally had no defense against this guy if he decides that he wants to see me again. So, I didn't really have much of an option. I feel really lucky that I did have your help, because otherwise I may have been forced to stay there, and that would have been just... I was really, really scared. I mean, scared for my life. Um, you never know what weird people are gonna do to you. So that was my story time, very cheerful video this week. Thank you very much for listening to me, don't forget to hit like and subscribe. Thank you very much for watching, bye!